Hey, what's going on everyone? Welcome back here on this uh, beautiful Friday night, October 20th, 2023. It's about 10.40 p.m. here, California time. Taking a look at the last 24 hours here of earthquake activity on the globe here from the USGS, also the EMSC data. Uh, shows pretty good cluster of activity stirring up here across the areas of the Middle America Trench. That's going to be this region down here just off the coast of Mexico, Guatemala, and the uh, El Salvador area. All seeing some heightened activity here, including a 4.3 within the last oh, 20 minutes or so, 30 minutes. Uh, getting a lot of movement going on here, and you can see some of that activity stirring up here on the Earthquake 3D globe as well. Uh, so we'll continue to watch that. Also some divergent boundary activity out here in the Pacific. Uh, that is showing up here from the USGS as well, 4.7 in the Central East Pacific Rise. Did see a little bit of activity out here across the New Madrid seismic zone earlier this evening. A 3.3 coming into the Tennessee area. Uh, this earthquake out here striking within the zone of the New Madrid area was felt uh, by a few folks out here. Some it looks like some light to moderate shaking being reported out here by the folks there around Dryersburg and uh, other areas around a couple different states out there. Uh, this area, again, is in a zone that's very capable of producing some very large earthquakes. The last ones were back in the 1800s. Uh, some upper sevens had a series of uh, some very large earthquakes out there in the New Madrid seismic zone. We studied those in school, and um, you know, I still remember that. I'm not for sure about the regular reoccurrence intervals here for the New Madrid, but... This little 3.3 just letting us know that the fault system out there is still alive and will produce a large earthquake one of these days. A little spotty activity through uh, Texas and also a little bit of movement up into the Oklahoma area tonight. Uh, the Yellowstone area not showing anything here on the map, but I do want to double check, make sure we don't have any considerable swarms going on. Doesn't look like it. I'm really not seeing any um, earthquake activity up here just looking at these graphs here. So uh, pretty calm there for now. Uh, what did I do? I lost all my earthquakes. You know, if I didn't have a hundred different windows open here, I'd be able to probably, oh goodness, <laughs> work a little bit easier. All right, into the Pacific Northwest we go. Mount St. Helens area seen, uh, wow, that's a pretty good amount of earthquake activity up there for 24 hours. Uh, most of that, all of that is just around midnight or so. Goodness, that's a lot. Uh, so let's go ahead and check out the Mount St. Helens area seismograph stations. I want to make sure we got the most recent data here from the USGS on their volcano monitoring site. Check out the September area or this uh, it's SEP earthquake activity over the last 24 hours here. Yeah, there we go. A couple of these. Uh, not big ones, but they are. it looks like they're definitely reporting a lot of these smaller ones surprisingly there's a bunch here as well uh, from uh, yesterday about this time or so but uh, that's a pretty good uh, mountain earthquake activity um, looking at the magnitudes the largest magnitude of 1.1 nothing big at all but uh, definitely an ongoing little sequence of earthquake activity there across the uh, Mount St. Helens area. Continue to watch that. A little bit of movement up around Mount Rainier as well, but nothing like the uh, Mount St. Helens area. Let me double check the um, <clears throat> the gas emissions up here. See if we have any unusual activity stirring up here across the charts. Carbon dioxide about level. Uh, hydrogen sulfide sulfur dioxide all these look uh, fairly stable I'm really not seeing any major uptick here across the area uh, if that happens then that's time to keep an eye on this thing but right now looks like just a uh, quite a bit of uh, little earthquake activity stirring up out there today all right uh, moving on to Northern California a handful of earthquakes out here across the uh, well, just off the coast here of Eureka, 3.2 and a 2.4 right here along the plate boundary, Pacific side. Not seeing a whole lot of movement in Northern California. One earthquake here 
into the uh, coastal range fault system near the Makama Fault 1.8. Typical Clear Lake volcanic field activity there across the Calpine hydrothermal plants near Cobb Mountain. Uh, Nevada is still seeing a little bit of activity stirring up here in the Spanish Springs region outside of Sparks and Reno area. Uh, it's been an ongoing little deal here for a little bit. Uh, San Andreas Fault here, the creeping segment, a couple smaller microquakes leading up into the Calaveras Fault Zone. Nothing major going on there for now though. Southern California looks pretty quiet. Aside from one little earthquake here in the last hour, 1.7. Uh, looking out across the rest of the map here, Lucian Trench area of Alaska still seeing some movement up here. Uh, mixed bag of some deeper activity and uh, a little bit of shallow activity as well. Uh, over here around the Izu Trench, seen a handful of earthquakes today as well. It looks like some fours and even a five-pointer out here. Right around the Izu Islands area, not specifically right around the region where we've seen that swarming. That was a little bit more centered over here. But still, looks like we got some uh, pressure building up out there across this area of the plate. Uh, further down south, there's a little bit of that adjustment I was talking about this morning, watching for that uh, to stretch up here across the Java Trench. Really didn't see anything big, uh, aside from uh, looks like a couple fours up there, but I was watching this, seeing if this would pick up any, and it looks like it did slightly. Uh, a little bit of activity across the Indonesia area. This is very typical in this region. A handful of uh, deeper quakes and shallower earthquakes over here across the Tonga Trench. I uh, did have some deeper movement quakes here earlier this morning. A couple hours later, some surface adjustment going on here uh, up at the uh, Tonga um, Trench area, the subduction zone level. As uh, far as New Zealand goes, looks like a little 3.0 out there. Let's double check and see what we have here. That's from yesterday or this morning. Uh, let's see here. This is just the uh, recorded seismograph drums here. A little bit of activity stirring up South Island area in the last 24 hours. Um, that did show up on some of these other seismograph stations, but uh, a little bit of activity here around the uh, Rata Peaks area as well. Uh, but overall, typical across that plate boundary. Southeast Indian Ridge, seen a little divergent boundary out here. Very shallow crust, uh, creating that uh, little fracture zone out here. You can see the new ocean ocean out here forming. That's what these uh, little squiggly lines are, supposedly, from uh, the uh, divergent boundary activity. 4.7 near the, uh, I'm not for sure what that is, but some type of fracture zone here. Um, creating some new oceanic crust out there. Pretty cool to see. Big Island of Hawaii. Uh, let's see what we got. Pahala has been rocking and rolling quite a bit here, including a 2.1. The Kilauea Volcano here got a 1.8 in the last hour. Let's go ahead and double check, see what's going on at that volcano on the big island from the HVO. This daily update was put out today, earlier. Uh, the volcano there, the Kilauea Volcano, is not erupting. And uh, the south, the area to the southwest of the summit is waning, waning from... Uh, following an intrusive event that began earlier in October. Uh, the unrest may continue to wax and wane with changes to the input of magma into the area. So it's got a lot to do what's going on underneath this area into the, uh, the uh, you know, the melted areas below where this hot spot sits, the big island that is. Um, and it's just, it's an ongoing thing right now. These little earthquake swarms and um, inflation details kind of spiking up. Let me double check those and see what we have. It's possible it could be leading towards something bigger. But just have to watch that and see um, how this plays out as far as the, uh, the amount of tilt. The amount of earthquake activity and ultimately the, the amount of magma that's uh, pushing up underneath this area. Here's the past two days. Notice these little trends here. Looks like we're going down right now. Maybe a little downtrend overnight and then probably another uptick. 
Uh, it's interesting to watch. This is the last 30 days of activity. And obviously we're heading up, building up some pressure. Um, but it's nothing huge, like an, you know, an immediate amount in one day. This is just a gradual rising here, inflation of this uh, area around the summit area of, of um, Kilauea Volcano. Uh, I forgot this one was off. doesn't look all that um, accurate. This seismograph station here does show a little bit of activity here, localized to the um, Kilauea Volcano. Notice this activity here in the last couple hours. Uh, some of that may be some activity being picked up around the Pahala area. But also it looks like we just got some new activity stirring up here. So it could be picking up. It could be active overnight. Kind of looks like it wants to. Latest one at 2.2 coming in just within the last couple minutes. 3.2 kilometers deep. So stuff brewing underneath this area. We'll continue to watch that. One earthquake over here across the uh, Indonesia area. 228 kilometers deep. Uh, what else we got? handful of earthquakes down here in the South America region. Most of these deep, actually all of these pretty deep here. Watch the surface areas up here for some potential larger movement. Out here across the Mediterranean, we got one earthquake in the Greece area earlier this evening, 4.3, about 10 kilometers deep or so. Uh, let's see, make sure I turn off the bells. Looks like I, looks like I did. Let's see anything else going on here as far as unusual activity goes. Uh, got some movement out here in Turkey area. A couple, uh, couple earthquakes in this region. Atlantic Ocean. Nothing. Absolutely nothing going on here. Uh, so big time push going on over here across the area of the eastern Pacific and adjacent plates. Uh, that includes South America. So just kind of keep an eye on it. Definitely... Uh, some stuff ramping up here today, it looks like, just by looking at this globe. Remember, this is going to show a little bit more earthquake activity below that 4.0 threshold that USGS uses. So we don't see all of that earthquake activity out here on their map. But here on the globe, uh, that's a mix of USGS and also the EMSC uh, world data out here, which is... Uh, handy in terms of seeing the uh, potential areas of swarming and uh, right now it looks like middle america trench south america area picking up uh, space weather activity can't really say it's picking up all that much because well it's not picking up i was reading a little article here from the uh oh i can't remember which who it's from if it was a space weather prediction center i think it was from the uh, noaa folks there how it's not unusual to see uh, declining sunspots uh, during a solar maximum uh, cycle. And that's kind of what we're heading into right now. Uh, they also mentioned that the sunspots can rapidly form out of the blue. And we have seen it uh, throughout the year today, or throughout the year, this year. And, um, you know, we'll continue to watch these. We're really quiet out here right now. There's not a whole lot of areas that are even capable of producing any type of flaring. Uh, right now, 60% chance for C flare. M flare at 5%, X flare around 1% chance. But uh, I don't know. There's really not a whole lot of hope here in terms of solar flaring. And around the eastern limb, about the same. So it's going to be an interesting solar cycle here to see what, uh, see what happens as we head into that maximum. Got a little bit of auroras kicking up. Uh, this was put out like two days ago. Uh, geomagnet geomagnetic activity is also at quiet levels, although an increase is forecast for the next 48 to 72 hours. So maybe that's what we're looking at. Coronal mass ejection observed on October 16th is predicted to pass close to Earth. Uh, we're getting a little bit of that right now, it looks like, up there across the... Uh, polar regions down there in Antarctica as well. Uh, looks like um, potential seeing that into portions of Canada and uh, northern Alaska. So heads up if you got clear skies out there. Uh, numerical models. What do we got going on? We got a whole lot of rain coming to the uh, Texas, Oklahoma area. Check this out as we 
watch the remnants of this tropical system down here enter into the Mexico area and uh, provide quite a bit of moisture brewing up here in that area. Uh, also probably the potential for some severe weather so we'll have to keep an eye on that. Uh, very cold air stretching across this area of the uh, Pacific Northwest and Montana and Wyoming. That blue is some heavy snow up here in Wyoming. Goodness. Uh, so that's going to stretch across a good portion of the country uh, before heading off north. Let's go ahead and check out the um, symbol here. See what we got. High pressure right now. Hopefully today was our lot, last hot day. It's about 90 degrees today here in Northern California where I live outside of Chico. Get out of here, high pressure. I'm not into the heat anymore. We do have a low pressure coming in. Um, Sunday in the Monday bringing with it chance of rain um, gosh I don't like the looks of that this could change though I'm hoping it does I'm not I'm not liking that one bit uh, either way it looks like um, high pressure may build up a little bit here towards the middle of next week along along the eastern portion of the country but uh, that's gonna get replaced by some maybe maybe some cooler air it looks like but again we'll continue to watch that um, Rainfall totals there for the folks in uh, Texas are probably going to be quite impressive here. Let me bring up the precipitation here. I want to check this out. You'll see all this moisture funnel up here into the Texas area. This is just the uh, GFS or GEPS run. And of course there could be locally heavier amounts. But these guys are not really forecasting a whole lot of moisture it looks like maybe uh two to three inches or so maybe some heavier up here around texas let me double check that and see what we got from the windy map here uh which is actually a really cool site i do like to use it uh looks like we got a low pressure trying to build off the coast here uh so rainfall rain and thunder rain accumulation next 10 days here's some of those uh Rainfall totals. It looks like the Panhandle. Well, maybe not the Panhandle, but uh, Odessa area outside of Abilene northward is going to get some heavy-duty rain. Um, these guys are showing roughly between. Uh, looks like about four inches or so, four to four and a half to maybe seven inches. Uh, and this is from the ECM WF model. But either way, it looks like these guys have some uh, good, decent rain headed their way. And uh, that's probably a good thing because the drought out there was starting to kick back in. And um, it's beneficial definitely for them to have uh, some further rainfall. Here's the current drought. Uh, see that building up out here across portions of uh, Kansas, unfortunately. These guys need a lot of rain, but hopefully some of that moisture will make it up to your way. California, we're starting to get a return of some drought conditions out here after it being removed. We'll have to watch that. It is an El Nino year for us, so that means wetter uh, than average conditions out here for the majority of California, drier in the Pacific Northwest. So this will probably be amplified far as drought conditions go after the season, our rainy season is all done. But uh, yeah, goodness, still got quite a bit of drought out here. All right, folks, I am going to jump off. Oh, look at that. That's not good. I'm going to jump off here. Have a good Friday night. Stay safe out there. A lot of people doing crazy stuff in the world. Uh, best thing you can do is stay safe and uh, keep a positive mindset. I'll catch you guys back out here sometime tomorrow morning. Have a good night.